I'm Chris. And I'm Jesse. And this is Raw and Real Podcast. We are professional photographer and videographers. And we'll be talking about everything photo and video and everything you need to know. Welcome back to the party. <laughs> what? I tried to short, 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 <laughs> short, 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 uh, <laughs> podcast to make it potty. Welcome to the potty. You know, when something sounds good in your head and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to say it. And then you say it and you go, no, nope. Re- try to reel that one back in. Welcome to the potty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I just said party in a stupid way. <laughs> potty. Welcome to the party. If you're a Jersey. To the party. If you're a Jersey person, that sounds right. <laughs> I just well, did a wedding with a bunch of people from Boston, and the uh-oh. best man had like this most boston accent. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were done with it after the day, though. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> in the ABBA. In a what? Out in the ABBA. In the Boston ABBA. I don't know what that is. <laughs> the Boston Abba. The Boston Abba? Abba. Abba. Harbor. Harbor. Oh. Um, Abba. Wow, I feel so <laughs> slow. The Abba. I would just be like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> God. Anyways, welcome back to another podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. Yes. <laughs> We are unintentionally matching today, so I know. I Check got, out the video to see our matching fits. Got that PMA dog. PMA. Positive mental attitude. Oh, okay. I was going somewhere else. No, no. Keep. <laughs> don't, don't get weird with it. Don't get weird with it. <laughs> PMA. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Not PDA. Not public display of affection. Mm-hmm. Premenstrual yeah. attitude. What? <laughs> like PMS, but PMS. <laughs> is that something your wife does? <laughs> because I don't know. If... No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, today we're going to be talking about trends. Yes. Trendy boys today. Um... <laughs> Body with the trendy boys. You know, you got your hippies. Oh, my God. Or hipsters, I guess, is like the, the yep. modern version of hippies. that. Hippies. Hippies. You know, so we'll just cover, you know, our opinions on trends and if, you know, yeah. if you actually even like, the, do you even like trends? Are we talking about social trends? Or no, we're talking about like video photography, video, okay. video. Let's keep it photo, trends. video, yeah. trends. Photo, video trends. Not social trends or political trends or no, those are trends. That's too broad of a brush. Too much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> too much. We'll stay in our niche. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I mean. It depends. There's some some trends are here to stay and some trends are just come and go and you know, it it you gotta participate in some of them. I would to agree be relevant. That. Yeah. Some of them are like, This is stupid, but <laughs> You're like, I did I really just do that? And then there's there's some trends which I'll get into. I have one in particular that is like super, super close to me. So, oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. uh it's a trigger for me. And it's one that if you you could do the trend uh, appropriately like technically right. Yeah. And then you can do the trend just thinking you're doing a trend, but it doesn't make any sense and it's wrong. And that bothers me. How okay. the general consensus or the general photographer can't decipher between the two. And that annoys me. I got you. I got you. But we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll get... We'll, ooh, okay. That's a specific... I, I do enjoy trends, though. Yeah. I enjoy them. But once I'm done with them, I just want to move on. Yeah. But I feel like lately there's been trends that have just been sticking around for longer than they should. And I don't know. I just get yeah. really over them. And I'm like, can we be done? Can you guys just... I, I don't know, like the... Been the, there, done that. The, the trends yeah. that go around and like... Like every photographer has to do it at least one time, you know, to uh, participate in to the participate you know, in the trend to be relevant. Yeah, and like 
you know, oh, I did this one thing, you know, like I, you know, like a lot of photographers will go out and do, you know, styled shoots with couples or something or like yeah. they'll do model calls and say, hey, I got an idea I want to try. But then they just try something that everybody else has they tried. They just try the trend. <laughs> and that's kind of annoying to me. But if it naturally comes up in your work, you know, I mean, or trying trends with your actual couples, your actual clients. I love doing that. Like, I'm like, I want to try out two or three new things. If they work, they work. If they don't work. But see, like going I, out of your way to. See, I would rather go out of my way to try the trend. Yeah. That way it's like, I don't feel like I'm wasting anybody else's time. Like a paid client. Yeah. Like if it's paid, I'm like, all right. We're I think doing, it depends on how like. We're doing what I want slash what I, what you're pretty much paying me for. Because yeah. I haven't tried the trend. So you don't know about it. Yeah. So I would rather take my own time, play with it a little bit, and be like, mm, this is not my cup of tea. Or yeah. like, I freaking love this. We're doing this. But do you have a favorite trend or no? <clears throat> um, the one that's here to stay, and it's kind of one that I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit, is motion. Motion. I love the book. Like, because that's definitely a trend right now. And there's a difference between like blurry and motion. And that's the one I'll get into in a second. But I, I like a motion trend. So slowing your shutter down and trying to capture some motion yeah. and motion blur and trying to, like we just did a shoot with um, with uh, my assistant Kayla. And she um, did ro roller skates and skate, and he brought a skateboard. Cute. Longboard. Cute. And so I did a little bit of motion for that as like motion panning and stuff, trying to get them yeah. on the skates and like panning while I'm, slowing the shutter down yeah and that's the type movement. of motion i love you know showing movement yeah movement showing based stuff yeah. okay i got you yeah i would have ooh. what's your because my favorite one is like a love hate it's like i love it but at the same time <clears throat> sorry okay i don't feel like it's necessary like some people are pushing it mm. and that's film because yeah. i love me some film yeah like gosh i think i spent like years just shooting film for the heck of it and yeah. now it's like a trend like people want to bring their film cameras everywhere thanks kendall jenner for making <laughs> contacts awesome. way too expensive like that a camera's a great little point and shoot and it's solid and at max, it was already expensive at seventeen hundred dollars for a point and shoot, but now the last one just sold for like four grand, and I'm oh. like, that's dumb. I'm sorry, that's just dumb. Yeah. But <clears throat> besides that, like, I don't know. I just don't feel like pe people need to shoot film at a wedding. Like, I, I feel like you just it's need definitely to... different. Like, I mean, there's there's a difference between just doing it to be cool or doing it to yeah now if that's or part actually of your, doing it to create art yeah and using it in an artistic way not just to participate in a trend but really just knowing what you're doing yeah because i just i don't know i'd go back and forth because people are like oh but like you know film is film and i'm like my clients don't even know that i don't shoot film yeah like my past not this is not boasting or <laughs> prideful i promise but like my last four inquiries i had to ask me if i shoot digital because my yeah. photos look film enough to them so they they have no idea so it's like okay why would i even bring a film camera then if they can't even tell the difference yeah. or can't even tell if all my photos are film or not so well my goal was achieved but at the same time it's like you don't have to do that i don't know but I do love film. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, me too. I love film. Mixed emotions on that one. But I would have to say the next, our next part is probably one of my favorite things. If you could kill a trend in this very moment, which what? trend would you kill right now? Like to just stop completely and never see again. Yeah. I think this is where I'll get into what I was talking about. And so there's a trend which I was totally opposed to before it really ca caught on and started, and I was very adamant that I hated it. But when I realized how you could do it appropriately, technically right, I loved it, and I do 
uh, incorporate into my work now. And that's the trend of blurry, blurry okay, photos. The blurry. Out of focus. Strictly talking about out of focus because you can have motion blur and have a lot of movement. Yes. And that's different to me when you have, let's say, your couple and you tell them to run or you tell them to, you know, move really fast and, and do, you know, have a lot of motion movement in their in their pose. And you slow your shutter speed down a little bit yeah. and you capture that motion aspect of it. That's different than what I'm about to talk about. And it's blurry or out of focus. So the wrong way to do out of focus is to have your couple doing whatever. Okay. Let's say they're even looking at the camera smiling. Yeah. And you focus on the background and the background is nothing. Right. Oh, it's okay. just, it's just like, it's just water or it's just trees. It's literally nothing. There's no importance. Yeah. And you take the photo. It's not adding to the photo. That is a, a, a wrong way to do a trend. So, but there's so many people that do that and post that photo. That photo does nothing for the couple. And I would know if I got that photo, I would instantly discard it. But it's a lot of people's first photo on their Instagram carousel or something, or you know, and yeah, and they're even having reels how to how to create a blurry you know blurry photo, focus on the back you know like it does nothing to it okay, and Agreed. so the right way to do those types of photos is if you want to focus just on the background, for sure, have them doing something that isn't looking at the camera or isn't meaningful enough, where you would want them in focus. And be focusing on something that means something. Yeah. It has to mean something. So, I don't know, going out of left field, like Statue of Liberty in the background. Or, you know, like a big building. In yeah, the like the a church or something or like that. A bridge. That. Or, yeah, there's something in the background that you're focusing on having that framed with the couple in front of it. Yeah. Now it's a meaningful photo to them. Exactly. Because it's something cool in the background or anything. Or if there's birds and water in the background, or it's yeah. got to be something. It can't just be something nothing, added. you know. Yeah. And so that is kind of I, I hate I hate that because people just do that and then they'll post it and be like, "Look how great I am," you know. But that literally it takes no skill to do, and you don't know, like they they won't even change their camera settings at all or anything. So I'll even There's no like, why behind the photo. Yeah. So I'll even turn image stabilizer off. I'll do turn the shutter speed down lower, you know, so it's you're you're trying yeah. to what it's trying to do to me is to imitate a film photo. Yeah. And because film is so tricky and there's so many stipulations to like so many challenges to shooting like old school film where you have to set all your settings right. Like you have to do everything manually. You don't just point yeah. and like shoot basically what you're saying like you have to control all of the settings without a light meter or even a really crappy light meter. You know, you have to know what you're doing. And so a lot of times you'll have missed shots. You'll have photos yeah. that are blurry, out of focus. You'll have um, shots where your shutter speed was just way too low. You don't have image stabilizers. You don't have any of that. So you're trying to imitate one of those photos, you know, that people love. And when people go back and see their photos, they love those photos because there may only be that one photo of them. Yeah. And that's why it's so special is that they can see how happy they are, even though they're out of focus, something yeah. really cool in the background ended up in focus, but that's the one photo they have from that memory. Exactly. And so it's that, that's what you're trying to replicate. replicate. And you can't just do that by just saying, you know, look yeah. at the camera and I'm going to, you know, focus on whatever. <laughs> yeah. And there's one more that's kind of a follow up to that. Sorry. No, is, you're good. You're good is a trend by this is more um like good photographers popular photographers that do this yeah and i've seen it one time very specifically like so terrible i hated it so much and oh, it's gosh. the accidental shot photo so it's where a good photographer will post a photo and be like i act like my camera accidentally went off and i took this photo look at it it's a masterpiece it's art you know like this is yeah. true art it's like you you don't just unintentionally paint a masterpiece. Exactly. You don't unintentionally create a masterpiece. Masterpieces are carefully thought out and well done, you know. Yes, it can be a good photo, right? It could be a cool shot, but it's not like you didn't do anything. Yeah. So this one photographer, I'll even name drop her. I'm pretty sure it was like Dawn Photo. It was one of those. It was one of the Dawns. And I they... Don't, I don't follow either because I don't um, know about them. <laughs> so they... They, uh, she took a, a photo 
and well, she had a couple in the mountains or something like that. And she said that she randomly got this, 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 like she went back and looked at her camera and randomly saw that there was this photo in it. And what she had said was that her camera was dangling on her side and the shutter accidentally went off and she got this photo and she posted it. And there was like thousands of likes, hundreds of comments from like in India Earl, like all these big names, right. That commented yeah. on it. Like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Like you are such a great artist. You are, this is a masterpiece. This is a like, like, um, just going on and yeah, on like, about it. Like calling her, um, Bob, Bob, what's his name? Bob Ross. Yes. They're like, there is like only creating, one Bob. Like, you're creating happy moments like Bob Ross and all these, like, like literally so many people just doting over her. Like, this is a masterpiece. This is amazing. Blah. And it was literally like a blurry mess of a photo. You couldn't even tell who the couple was or what the couple was. It was just, it, it was terrible. Like it wasn't, a, it was literally, we take those, like I take one of those every session on accident, yeah. you know? <laughs> And so it's, it was just annoying to me that, you know, that's a trend of like, I accidentally took this amazing photo. Look at how great I am. Like, yeah, I can, doesn't work. That's not, I can piggyback thing. on that because like there's you know, celebrities do stuff like this yeah. all the time and then they call it fashion and then all the other celebrities, oh my God, you're an inspiration. This mm -hmm. is unworldly like this is so so good and you're like um he's wearing like the same old 80s pattern from a couch like <laughs> that's not fashion not cool. like my parents bought that at a garage sale and we used it for yeah. 10 years until it broke and then we bought something new like, like whatever that justin beaver wore the other day Brittany yeah like me. prime <laughs> like what the hell is that? prime example like there's oversized and oversized can look good. But then when you go to that extent, <laughs> you're like, I'm sorry. No, it's just the no. It was like, but a, like mask, a mascot costume that like, a yeah, it looked like a joke. <laughs> like, no, but you all have other celebrities that are like, just be your fashion statement. Like yeah. him, probably the fit. Absolutely not. Like I have a hot take. So this might even, <laughs> This might even get you because you might even think these oh, are good. Geez. Is my hot take is I'm pretty sure it's Ariana Grande's wedding. Is it her? She married? I don't even know. It was I some celebrity's wedding. Know. It just posted a few months ago. I hate the photos. They're terrible. But oh. photographers around the world loved it and like were like, "This is so amazing! I oh my god!" I know what you're talking and about. one of like one of my good friends or one of my friends who's a photographer, yeah, I really like her work. She loved it and even like replicated it herself. But I hated her <laughs> her photos. They were terrible. So they were like the flash ones that they were done in like some weird cheesy hotel. Oh yeah, and I mean I think she had like a like a suit dress on or something. Anyways, uh, but yeah. I did not I like I the photos. They were terrible. Yeah. And photographers love it. And I uh, wasn't here for it. My thing is, like, if it's unintentional and you didn't mean to do it, yeah. I don't feel like you can take that much credit for it. Yeah. I don't, I'll, I'll just like that's, the other one after that. That is day. just, like, my personal how, yeah. opinion on it. Like, when someone just takes, like, an absolute blurry mess and I can't tell what's happening in the photo or anything like that and you accidentally shot it but you're trying to sell it off as art it's to me it's just no i don't i don't believe it's worth anything like there was no intentionality you didn't see a vision you didn't plan it you didn't i don't feel like you should get a lot of credit for that now if you accidentally took a good photo That is different. Yeah. You're, you actually have something you're working with. Like we're talking about you took a blurry mess and you're trying to pawn it off as a good photo. Like those are two different things, believe it or not. <laughs> like yes. I know that sounds weird, especially if you're just listening in, in, but like if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when there's like, like I've like one person in my opinion that does blurry really well. I will name drop him because I can't find I all really, the photos, but these are some of them. 
I see what they're going for, but yeah, not I'm not the biggest fan. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is now, but um anyways, really but like popular for the the dude who I think straight <laughs> kills some blurry photos and just I've watched him work, so I know they're more on the intentional side and like they're more planned and sought out is Michael J. McDaniels. Dude has some fire blurry photos on his page. Like when the trend first started, he was one of the first people I saw do it. And I was like, okay, I get it. I can get behind this. I saw some other people. I'm like, "Mm, probably not a fan anymore, but he just kept delivering these like intentional blurry ones. Yeah. I don't know what that is. That's it. I don't understand. Can you screenshot that and and send it to me? We'll show y'all on YouTube so you can see what we're talking about. Took this photo by complete accident. I'm literally obsessed with it. Thank you to Bob Ross for making happy accidents a thing. See, but that's where it's wrong. Because Bob Ross... This shot is so beautiful. Amazing. I love it. Obsessed with this. OMG. Yes, I dig this. Okay, obsessed is an understatement. Yes. Stunning, holy, love, OMG. One person accidents, another person's inspo. Dude, I wish my accents looked like this. <laughs> like, what the like, I'm sorry. I'm not hating on people. It's like a painting. I'm not hating on people, I promise. It's just, I don't believe that that is a good photo. I really don't. And you know who, who would probably, like, side with me? Frono's photos. Fro knows. <laughs> Fro knows. But anyways, this this girl is she but, is a really, really, really yeah, good. Yeah, like I've seen her other work. Like she's because really after good. you showed me that one, I know who you're talking about. Her work is f- freaking phenomenal. So like we are not hating <laughs> on the <laughs> actual great. photographer. She's great. But I don't believe that photo is is good. Just and, so. and I don't know if, if she truly thought it was good either. She just posted it because it was a yeah. But that's the thing, thing is like but when people when you're that popular, it. Yeah. doesn't matter what you no do. one no one cares. You can literally sell anything yeah. as a trend or as like this is a good photo. And I don't feel that's right. Like some celebrities do it. <clears throat> and I actually I actually do take accident like accidental photos like that that i turn into art and i think they're amazing i put a lot of grain on them and i'm like this is so cool yeah and then just subtly put it in the gallery i don't make a big deal about it yeah i, I don't know to me that uh, there's there's no context it's way off yeah only one person's in the photo and it's supposed to be a couple shoot like <laughs> i don't know i feel like if we went back and like showed that photo to like people who've are film photographers that kind of like Leonardo da Vinci, not what I was talking about, but <laughs> when he did like, he I probably know, made a camera. I don't know if I showed Bob Ross that photo, he'd be like, what is that? <laughs> Cause Bob Ross did make happy accidents, but he turned it into a masterpiece. He took it from where it was and changed it to where you didn't even recognize the accident that is editing the accident and going, here it is. Like Bob Ross didn't just slap yellow paint across his like landscape picture and go, there you go. (laughs) Like that's not what happened. So comparing those two things is not accurate. And Bob Ross is a freaking legend. R.I.P. My dog. (laughs) Moment of silence for Bob Ross. (laughs) All right, we'll wrap this one up. In your opinion, do you think trends are good for the industry, period? Uh, it could be a double-edged sword. That's fine, because yes I think no. it is. <laughs> I think they are because it, they you have to stay relevant. And when you're not relevant to youth, you'll get quickly canceled and dropped. So true. it's important to stay with it. And if professional photographers don't catch on to some trends or at least stay relevant through them, then they will get quickly passed by the youth who are using their phones to create art and to create these trends and they'll just get passed and, and leave professionals behind for, to get the boring, you know, portrait work. Like 
super formal boring work not like the fun yeah. boring yeah. not the fun portraits, <laughs> not the you know? fun so I, I mean i think it's important i mean i i think that we need to have a little bit more um like a little bit more thought into what we're doing yes. and try to try to make them your own try to you know don't just see somebody else that does this like yeah. the same exact sh- like the same exact don't copy. session or shoot and be like oh i need to go do that you know yeah like feel inspired instead of directly yeah. copying like i understand copying to a point because you have to understand what's going on and if you can copy something that means you kind of know how to do it but then go do it yourself yeah so i understand that part yeah i feel that <sighs> my opinion is Trends are good for creativity. Um, I don't feel like they're that good for the industry. So my reasoning would be trends are phenomenal to help spark your creativity. Because let's be honest, like especially in the wedding industry, you, you, hit, you hit that like bump where you're just like, I just feel like I'm not doing anything new. I don't feel like I'm really inspired to keep shooting weddings. Like, quote unquote burnout if you will like so i just yeah you like hit that <laughs> wall and trends i have to give it to trends like they break that barrier down even if you hate them like like at first like i was not a fan of the blurriness but yeah. then i saw like michael kill a few photos and i was like okay that's kind of cool like done that way i like that let me go try that failed miserably <laughs> Did not do it in a session for a very, very long time. And now it's like, I'll do it like here and there, but they're intentional. Like, okay, I have this vision in my head. I'll dial in my settings for this one shot, get the shot, change my settings back. I'm not shooting like that. I'm not staying there the whole yeah. time. It's like, we'll dabble in the trend. Oh, we'll dabble. And if it turns out good, it turns out good. But I'm not sitting there trying to force a trend to happen the whole time. That's where I feel like trends are bad because people in the industry feel the need to, oh, well, like, because blurry is a trend, I have to have blurry photos in my gallery when I deliver it. Or film is a trend, I have to have film photos in my gallery to deliver it. And that's just not true. It just, you don't need any kind of trend in your gallery for it to be good. Like, I feel like that starts to take away from you as an artist or you as a photographer or videographer because you feel the need to follow other people's trends or anything like that. Like people hired you for you. They like your work already because they like you. And nine times out of 10, you're being hired for your personality, not necessarily your work. I know that because I was a hairdresser for 10 years and after you quote unquote prove prove yourself as a artist or a hairdresser or photographer, videographer, like you can take a photo and you can edit a good photo. Period. You've proven yourself. People from that point on, in my opinion, hire you for your personality. Do we click? Do we vibe? They're not hiring you off trends. Like that's just yeah. not the thing. All right, bonus question. This oh, is hot yes. take time. Hot Chris take. is hot take. It could be like a thing. Okay. Every time I ask you for a hot take. Chris's right. hot take Chris. right at the end. Okay. Is there room in our industry, wedding photography and videography, for non artists? Yes. Okay. It's a it's a painful question, but yes. <laughs> okay. Did you, uh, someone has to have those jobs. Like those yeah. clients are there that just want Okay. That. Yeah. They're they want I hate to say it, but like most people start there. Yeah. Because like photography. Are is... you born an artist or can you be, can you develop your artistic side? There are a few people that are born an artist the same way as few people are born athletes. Okay. Like there's natural talent, but natural talent doesn't get you everywhere. But do you think artistic vision and creativity can be learned? To an extent. Somewhat. Like, there are some people that are just, like, they're originators. Like, yeah. there are some pages that I come across on Instagram, I'm sure people everywhere do, that you're just like, how in the world did you come yeah. up with this? And, like, 
you try to look back through history and you're like, I don't know where they got the idea from, but like, this is new. This is original. And then there's other people you're like, they do phenomenal work, but they're just not original. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's true. But like every person or in the wedding industry, no one has the same story. Yeah. Like no one does. So that's what makes most of the photos you see more original because no couple is ever the same. Yeah. And they should be treated that way. For me, I think that's where they, like you can easily, like now being in the industry, easily draw a line between two sides. It's not light and airy or dark and moody. Yeah. To me, it's it's just photographers and artists. And there's people that are just good photographers and they're technical and they can, or maybe they're not even technical, but they can create good, you know, quality, decent photos. Yeah. And then there's people who create art exactly. during a wedding. And I think, um, you know, that's kind of where we're transitioning, where I feel like people are trusting us to be the artist. Exactly. They don't like, they're not, you know, like saying we have to get all these specific photos. They're like, you just work, you know, we yeah. trust you. We're paying you thousands of dollars. Yeah. Whatever you get, you get, you know? Yeah. And so I think that's the difference between. Yeah. Cause clients look at you that way. So too. yeah, I, I think there's room for non-artists in, yeah. in this, in this job too. I think a I think most of us start that way yeah. because you don't know. You're like, I don't know how to work the business. I'm trying to figure things out, how to dial with my settings properly all the time. And then there's that point where you're just like, I don't even have to look at my camera really to dial in the settings for the room and I'm good. Yeah. So and there you have it. Chris's there hot take. Go. Hot take. Non-artist, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. There's a place for you. <laughs> That, I just, it's a place I've you. processed it the same way as like hairdressing because it's a similar business. You have your artist in the industry that literally paint, if you will, yeah. pick like what they see with their scissors in somebody's hair. And then you have other people who are like great clips and they're like, they told me a number two guard all the way up. We're doing a number two <laughs> guard all the way up. <laughs> like, Also, by this, uh, po when this podcast is released, I will have had the R5C for like, what, a month now? <laughs> how, how, no. how far are we? Uh, <laughs> it's a while, but. You'll probably have it for a few weeks. We'll have the review up too. Maybe we can do a whole, oh, whole yeah. episode on it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I feel like we'll we do should. do like a R3, R5C, R5 comparison video or something. Yeah, we'll just start giving our hot take yeah. on uh, some gear to make that a little more interesting. We'll have to film some, this on something else right. so that we can. Have yeah, R3 so we can talk about camera. the R3. <laughs> we just have a picture of it. Right. All right, guys. See ya. Peace See you out. in the next one. Bye.